Hello everyone and welcome to Dynamic Cable Wire. In this lesson, we will learn how to make a wire built with N-Hair Dynamics as well as setting up the wire so we can use the cable in different settings. As you see, I'm in the Effects Shelf menu and if I hit play, this starts the interactive playback. Doing so, I can grab my controller here and as you see, I can move my cable here and my wire interacts. I can move it up and down, but I do have a floor here, so I can just drop the cable here down to the ground. I will show you how we will go through and create all these nodes here in dynamic setup so that we can constrain our wire to our geometry and control it using the hair system in N Dynamics. But first, if it wasn't for my horse, I wouldn't have spent that year in college. Okay, I'm going to open up my start file here, Dynamic Cable Wire. Okay, here in Maya I have my startup file. As you can see here, I have this charger pad. The charger pad has a wire connected to it here, as you can see here. The wire is very long. Let me just create an, a group and just call this body. And I will show you my original cable. As you can see here in this original cable, it's pretty dense, and there's no intersections in between here. There's no loops. It's just one long line, and it connects here to our charger pad. Now, if you just wanted a basic controller, let me hide this and show you my short cable example, where I have a controller here, and I'm able to move this along, and it'll control the, the length of the wire. I just set it up so I can make it long and short. Now this setup is actually a lot easier than you would think. And what I did is I just made a cluster. And I'll show you what the cluster does. So if we go here into the vertex, we see there's all these vertices. So if I select some vertices, you can see here I can choose deform. So here in my deform, you can see I have the cluster button. Now if I just click cluster, I get my cluster handle. Now I can have a controller for these vertices. It's a very simple setup. So if I delete that cluster, and I select all my points, create the cluster. Now I'm able to control those points with the cluster. And now I can parent the cluster to a controller. So I can go to create locator. Now if I move the locator to the center of the cluster, I can just drag the cluster inside the locator now I have my locator I can select and I can move my locator. If I increase the local scale on my locator, I can just make it just a little bigger so I can see it a little better. And so that's how this side was created. But now I want to have this wire behave more like a dynamic cable so that if I can move this controller anywhere, the wire will be dynamic uh, as in behave like if it were in a real physical environment. So if I hide these, my basic setup is I just have this body group, but then I have this dynamic cable. As you see here, I have two controllers, one at the beginning on that side. I don't really need it on this side, but I could. Where I would really want it is on this side. As you can see here, this USB-C port is not connected to the wire, but I do have it into the controller group. Now just the wire sits alone inside my dynamic cable and I created an empty group called wire sim. This is where we're going to build our simulation. Okay, the first thing you're going to notice is if I show all the vertex points, you can see how I broke this element down. It has intersections that are very close together. This will allow a sort of semi-clean simulation. So the first thing I want to do is I want to build a hair element. So here I just selected my dynamic cable group. I'm just going to zoom out and take a look at both of my locators. My cable here just is a straight line. So that's good, it works for us. We could use any type of geometry as long as we're able to build a curve. And so let's build this curve. I zoom in here and there's different sections here in this cable that's going to allow us to deform the cable in a much more smoother way. I'm just going to go into my edge, select an edge loop, 
And if I go to modify, convert, polygon edges to curve, it's going to create a polygon curve that matched our edges. But I'm just going to rename this to NURBS Curve 1, modify, center pivot. What that's going to allow me to do is just absolute position to 0, 0 on the Y, enter. And now what that did is that moved our curve into the center. You can see here that now the wire is in the middle. Okay, next we want to turn the curve into a hair follicle. We can select the NURBS curve. We'll go into hair. And then you can see this option, make selected curves dynamic. And that's exactly what we want to do. Now you see that dropped in a couple nodes here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of them and move them right into my wire sim group. As you can see, if I select the curve, it's under the follicle element here. We're interested in the output curves, this curve, the new curve. So if we just display the new curve, we can see here now it's behaving more dynamically like a hair follicle or a string. Now let's change some of the settings. If we go into our hair system and we roll down some options such as collisions and dynamic properties, we can edit the dynamic properties of stretch resistance. Let's turn this up really high to something like 2000. That should be it for dynamic properties. But now let's go into collisions. If we go to solver display, we can display the self collision thickness. And then we also want to check self collide. Make sure you display all your objects and you can now see the collision of the curve. Right now I made it a little higher. But if we just go into the curve again, under the hair system shape, we can just adjust the scale to something that's maybe the size of our cable, or maybe just a little bigger like that. Okay, now I'm just going to turn the solver display to off and we're done with the collisions. Okay, let's zoom out and see what our simulation looks like. If we hit play, we can see the curve now is, is much more resistant to stretching we go into the follicle shape, you see here the point lock. So if we just say no attach, and we play back, now we get just the curve, just the hair follicle falling straight down. That's fine because we have our two controllers here and we want to create our own custom constraints. We can do that in the end constraint menu up here. If I select the curve under output curves and just display that, right click and go to control vertex, you can see there's a lot of vertex. And if we go here on the side, that's the end of the USB cable, we can select this end. And if we hit constraint, transform constraint, play, you can see now the hair just falls down on that side. But let's do it for both sides. Let's go over here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to control vertex and I'm going to select these couple here last three, maybe even the last four, because that's going to allow me to constrain it right here at this point right here. Good. If I go to end constraint, transform constraint, that creates the constraint. I'm going to move it over just to that point right there. Now, if I zoom out and hit play, we see the result. They are constrained now using our custom constraints at both ends, just like before. Let's show all of our objects. Here's where we are in our simulation. Now we want to attach the cable to this hair follicle, this curve. Go to deform, and we're looking for the wire deformer. You don't have to have anything selected, but just click wire deformer, select the cable, hit enter, and then select the output curve. That's the new curve with the dynamic properties attached. And then hit enter. Now if we hit play, we can see our wire and our curve interacting with the dynamics. Now we want to adjust some settings, some more settings. If we click on the output curve and we go into the wire, we want to adjust fall off distance to eight. That's going to be very important for later. Now, if we go into the side view and we play, we can see the curve hangs down really low and I want it to interact with the ground. I'm going to enter interactive playback. And I'm going to go into the nucleus, into the attributes. If I scroll down, you'll see something here called ground plane. I'll use the plane and you see, we get a little uh, controller here so that we can adjust the plane. 
I'm going to adjust it down just to maybe something like negative 0.28. Now if we hit play, you can see that the wire just like how we want it. Now I'm going to select the follicle and I can turn on my solver display for the self uh, collisions. I'm just going to check that they're just right. Maybe something like that. It's probably about the same as before. Okay, a couple more steps to go. We see here we have these two dynamic constraints. Close up our sim, but we also have these dynamic constraint controllers. Drag this into that one so that now the dynamic constraint is controlled by our main controller. We can do the same on this side. Just put our dynamic constraint inside of our controller group. And now what I can do, simulate my playback. Select one of my controllers and I can move it. And you see that controls the cable. Wow, how interesting. I can go back into the nucleus, select use ground plane, stop, rewind, restart the simulation, and I can use, you see here I can do my simulation, but it all rests now on the ground. I can create something cool here. Ooh. How cool is that? Let's now put this to a more practical use. For example, maybe we want to have this cable roll up. And in my case, that is exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to roll this cable up. If I hit interactive playback, I can maybe do something like this. Maybe I want to set up a, a curve, but you see I'm sort of limited now into the placement of these objects. I can maybe do like a rotate and just place it there. Some of the wire geometry you can see is a little uh, is a little awkward. If you go here into the wire, you can control some of the rotation. I'm just gonna undo everything. I'm gonna do a roll. I just brought in some animated geometry that I made. You can see this is what this does. It just moves from one end all the way to the other end. But there's also an expression here on the cylinder in the Y position. If I go right click and edit the expression, you can see it's just multiplying the current frame times two. It just allows me to rotate without actually setting any keyframes. What I can do, I can do something very, very simple. Attach this controller to this object right here. I'm just gonna do a parent constraint, something very easy. I'll select that, then I'll select the controller, I'll go to constraint, parent constraint. If I hit play, you'll see it's going to start circling around. But there's no collisions. In order to make the collisions work, we're going to select our helper object, go to end cloth, create passive collider. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow interactions between our cable and our helper object. And as you see, it's going to wrap around, wrap around, and you can see some of the self collisions happening here in the wire too. That is from adjusting the width of our collisions. Now you see, as it just gets rolled up here, I'm going to stop right there, hide that object. And now here we have something that looks a little bit more natural and is kind of the setup of what I was going for. And you can set this up in many different ways. You can apply this uh, method uh, to different roll-ups if you wanted to. I'm going to hit rewind and that should place everything back to exactly the start point. Now if you wanted to take off the parent constraint, you can just select the controller and under node state it's under normal, but you can select has no effect. But that's fine. What I'll do is I'll just delete this constraint 
I'll adjust this, I'll rotate that, maybe something like 90 degrees. Delete expression, I'll set that back. Now I'll have to change the rotation order, that's fine. And then I can enter the expression here again, equal equals frame times two. I'll scale this up just a little bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna adjust the animation. I'll delete these. I'll move it over just a little bit. I'll take this frame, turn on auto key, and put this right about here. Now, if we do the same thing as we did before, select our helper object and then select our controller, go to constrain, parent, rewind, hide our object, and let's watch. As it starts to finish rolling up, I'm just going to stop it, and here we go. As you can see, some of our geometry is a little deformed. That's just because of the initial state of my own geometry. Yours will probably be a little different. I'm just going to group some of my objects here. I'll, I'll put in the rigid body in my wire sim group, and there you have it, the dynamic cable. So in this lesson, we learned how to make a dynamic cable using n constraints, n hair, and dynamics. We learned how to create the controllers for each of the sides, as well as creating a reference or dummy object to allow us to wrap our cable. Let me just try one more way. On the side. Put that right there. Now let's see how this baby rolls. Getting a little crazy there. Getting a little crazy. Thank you for enjoying this lesson and my sense of humor. And just remember... Ah!